Hello, and welcome to my setup guide for the new X-Flasher 360 product. Let's take a quick look at the product. You can see we have a USB port for connecting to our computer on the left. It's a USB mini. On the bottom is our JTAG programming port, and this is for glitch ships. Over here we have our SPI connection for a 16 megabyte or 256, 512 megabytes uh, consoles. And over here is our four gigabyte EMMC connection. At the top of the product is a slide switch and you can slide it between the two modes, SPI and EMMC. Please note that you need to be in SPI mode to program glitch chips. Let's plug the device into a computer with a mini USB cable. When you do so, you will see that a light appears on the product. Let's get the drivers installed and set up. You will need a computer with Windows Vista Service Pack 2 or later. We've tested this up to Windows 10, but it should also work on Windows 11 as well. You also need a copy of my JRunner with extras, as the implementation for the X-Flasher is custom. I'm going to launch it here on the computer. If it's the first time you've launched JRunner with extras, and you don't have this C++ redistributable installed, you're going to get this prompt. This is required in order for the software to work properly and connect to the X-Flasher. We'll follow the on-screen instructions. It's very easy. Just accept the license terms and click install. It doesn't take very long, as you can see. When it's finished, JRunner will automatically launch. You can see that the current XFlasher mode is displayed in the logo. It's currently in the EMMC mode. If I take the product and flip the switch to SPI, you will see that after a few moments, the SPI mode appears. However, even though this appears, the drivers may not be installed. Unless you have Windows Update installing them automatically, it is very possible that the product will not function yet. To fix this, you can head up to the X-Flasher menu at the top and select Install Drivers. We'll continue on the UAC and the X-Flasher driver installer will uh, automatically open. Please note that you do not need to put your system into test mode or disable driver signature enforcement. I happen to have mine in test mode because I use various hardware in this machine. However, all of the X-Flasher drivers are signed and therefore will work natively. We'll follow the on-screen prompts to install the drivers. You can see it's very quick on my machine since I already had the drivers installed. However, this may take a few moments before this completed uh, screen appears. A very easy way that you can test if the product is working is in the SPI mode to click on the question mark icon. Since we have no console plugged in, it won't give us anything found, but you can see that we're able to connect to the X-Flasher as it checks the flash config and then detects that there is no console. All right, I'm gonna get a console and show you the brief overview of how to use the product correctly. As a demonstration, I'm going to be dumping my big block Jasper because I already have a pair of NAND cables connected to it. You need to ensure whenever you're dumping a NAND that the console is plugged into power. Then we can simply connect our NAND cables to the SPI connection on the X-Flasher. With the cable firmly seated and the switch in the SPI mode, we are now ready to go to our computer and read the NAND. We can use JRunner just like we've always expected to do so. With two NAND reads selected, I will click Read NAND. Now since this is a big block console, we will be prompted to select the dump size. Unless you specifically want to back up your MU for whatever reason, a 64 megabyte dump is all you need. You can see that's the default option. I'm going to go ahead and select that. You'll see after a brief moment, it will start to read the NAND you'll notice that the block progress is being displayed and it's very quick. I should point out that if the X-Flasher cannot detect what type of console you have, it will ask you what size you want to dump. However, I have religiously tested this and every single console, including 64 megabyte dev kits, should work. The procedures are the same for everything else, including writing ECCs and writing NANDs. Everything works. You can also read and write from the custom NAND window and read, write, and erase all work correctly. I will point out that the start block and length parameters are not yet functional. However, I may enable these in a subsequent update. You can cancel the NAND read at any time by pressing the escape key on your keyboard. The X flusher will immediately stop whatever it is doing. Just like before, if a NAND file already exists in the output folder and the X flusher is going to attempt to override it, you will be warned. 
you can cancel the operation or continue, just like before. Before attempting an EMMC type NAND, ensure that you flip the switch on the X flasher to the EMMC mode. Then you can connect up to your console and read the NAND as normal. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Operation of the X flasher in EMMC mode is identical to the previous USB tool by the mod shop. Programming timing files is accomplished via the JTAG cable connecting to the bottom of the X-Flasher. Please note that the X-Flasher can only write timings while in SPI mode. I will also point out that the X-Flasher can only write SVF timings, not XSVF. I have already recompiled all of my timing files in SVF format, so that's the Zephyr RGH2, the RGH1.2, and the Trinity and Corona SRGH. I have also done RGH1 and RJTOP from Gleegly and Dr. Schottke's GitHubs, respectively. So, that's all working. Okay, in this example, I will program a timing for Corona. Please note that on 5 volt chips, you do not need power in the console to program the chip if it is installed in a console. However, 3.3 volt chips, you must have the power supply connected to the console or the programming will not work properly. If the chip is not installed in the console, or the VCC wire is disconnected, then you can program it without a problem. In this example, I just have it connected. I will demonstrate programming the timing file now by inserting the pin header at an angle into the chip, and then clicking the programming button in JRunner. And you will see that the timing file is programmed onto the chip. The X-Flasher's SVF flashing supports quite a few chips. It supports the X360 Ace, V1, V2, and V3. It supports the Cool Runners, Rev A, B, C, and D. It supports the Matrix Glitchers in all variations, so the QFP, the QFN, the BGA, and the Big QFP, which is what we just added in the last update. And it should support most other Cool Runner 2 based glitch chips, so that's the XC2C family. However, I will point out there are some methods that are not able to be programmed because they don't exist in this format. An example of this would be Muffin or RGH2. I don't have any source code for Muffin, and when I was reverse engineering it, I ended up working on a replacement for Muffin that boots up much quicker, and when I release that, it will support being programmed via SVF on the X-Flasher. I will not be porting any older glitching methods to SVF format, sorry. So that's the X-Flasher. Big thanks to Element, of course, for designing and getting this tool manufactured, and to the resellers for selling it. I had a blast working on the JRunner implementation. Thanks to Mina, who figured out how to make this chip read and write faster in SPI mode. And thanks to everyone who has tested this